Lord of God. Our Satan desires to sift all of us like wheat. Satan is on his job. And so we have to understand that if you're a child of God, guess what? Satan desires to mess with you. And so it doesn't make any difference what city you are, where you are, how long you've been on the battlefield. Satan, I really believe the longer you've been on the battlefield for the Lord, the more he messes with you. Because Satan is like this. I think his mentality is that if you're serving God and you're glorifying God, guess what? He wants to stop you and hinder you. But if you are in the world doing his worldly thing, Satan doesn't desire to mess with you. Because the thing says that he's already got those folks. Oh, yeah. who are in the world. Yeah. So the thing about it is that we know that Satan, uh, it says that the translation for Satan uh, is deceiver, um, uh, slanderer. And so we know that Satan will slander uh, you if you're working for the king, for the king of king and lord of lords. Now here's the thing, you need to prepare and be prayed up in order to handle the wiles of Satan. You just can't say, Satan, get thee behind me. I know a lot of folks say that. Uh, uh, you, you'll bind in the name of Jesus. No, no, no. You got to be prayed up, and you got to know some words. You use the word, the written word of God, to fight off Satan. Amen? Um, a good lawyer doing a courtroom with street vernacular. He has a trained vernacular. He has trained procedures that he must use in order to win a case or make his case heard. You just can't go in there talking about Satan. You know, you, I know you mess with me, but you know, you, I'm not going to let you ride today. You can go ahead and say that if you want to. Uh, you need to, Jesus, if Jesus used the written word to fight off Satan, then you should do the same thing. But, but, but I want you to go with me to the book of Job. We can see uh, Job 1. Uh, and for our consideration this morning, we'll be looking at verses 1 through 10. You can read that. Most of you should know it uh, about Job. Um, and, uh, but uh, we're going to be reading from the King James Version. And uh, just want to bring out a few points um, uh, to help us out along the way. Amen? For we have to understand that we are under attack. And if you're a Christian, Satan is going to mess with you. Um, and, and like it says, the song says, don't let him ride, because if you let him ride, he wants to drive. And so we don't want Satan driving around Second City Hitchcock in the mark. Amen. Uh, are you there? All right, I'm going to give you a little more time. It's Job 1, uh, right next to Psalm. Job 1. Uh, it reads on this wise, there was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and eschewed evil. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance also was 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels and 500 yoke of oxen and 500 she asses and a very great household so that this man was the greatest of all of the men of the east. And his sons went and feast in their houses every one his day and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. And it was so when the days of their feasting were gone about that Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of, of them all. For Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job did continually. Uh, now that, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and eschews evil? Then, then Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for none? Has not thou made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance and increased in the land. Verse 11, put forth thine hand now and touch all he hath and he will curse thee to thy face. I, I, I'd like to talk to you from this thought, how to handle opposition. 
how to handle opposition. No, no matter what you're trying to do for Christ, there's always going uh, to be opposition in your way. Uh, I think one of the greatest uh, challenges we have is that only Satan will mess with us, but we have some church folk, quote unquote, who will get in our way. Amen. Amen. Uh, we only have to call up Bona blind Bonamaeus along the way where he strategically put himself beside the road and was crying out, the son of David, have mercy on me. And, and the disciples told him, don't bother the master. But, but, but blind Bonamaeus was, was persistent in getting to where Jesus was so that he could receive his sight. You have to understand that along this life, everybody is not going to agree with what you're doing. But the thing is, is that if you're going to do something for God, uh, and folk are talking about it, it's called do it anyway. Don't let somebody stop you uh, from praising and doing work from an almighty God, for an almighty God. Are you with me? And, and so sometimes in life, God will allow certain things or certain people to come into our lives. And so we have it in our text where Job was minding his own business. Uh, he was an upstanding man. He prayed to God every day. And uh, when, when, when the sons of God, it says, got together, uh, Satan just came in uninvited. It, it's sad to come to a meeting uninvited. It, it, it used to be, we used to call it crashing the parties. You wasn't invited. You, you, they didn't want you there. But you went anyway because you thought you were important. We have Satan who thinks that he's important to where God, uh, see, see, darkness uh, cannot push out darkness. Uh, light can only push out darkness. And so what it is is that Satan had no business showing up where Jesus and the sons of God were there to have a meeting. But that's what Satan does. He does not ask you uh, to come in your life. He has to ask God. It's in the text. Uh, God says, or Jesus says, uh, and you say God says, and I'm like, Jesus says, you know, Satan has to ask me permission to mess with you. Yeah, yeah, he has to ask permission. So God allows Satan oftentimes to mess with us to test our faith. If a faith can't be tested, then a faith can't be trusted. And you have to understand that everything that we go through, guess what? Every now and then, God is testing our faith to see if we really believe what we're saying. Do you believe, do you really believe what you're preaching, preacher? Do you really believe what you're teaching, teacher? Okay, I got a test for you. I'm going to let Satan rebuff you, and I'm going to see how long you're going to handle that. And so we have to understand that God is using Job as a test substance to show Satan that he can't win. Uh, you, you, you need to be prayed up. I can't say that enough to where when we, every day we get up, we need to pray to God to fix our day. He won't put no more on you than you can bear. But we need to acknowledge God, who he is, know that he can protect us from Satan. Satan desires, and guess what? He wants you, if you're serving God, if, he, if you're serving God, and you really believe that God is who he say he is, and you've been serving him for a long time, Satan wants you. Because if he can bring you down, that will affect a whole lot of folk that's looking up to you. And don't think because of your lifestyle or other folk are not, uh, are not using you as a role model. As a Christian, when you sign on, you're a role model. And so Satan wants to get you and trip you up to where you will throw up both hands. And the thing about it is throw in the towel, but don't throw in the towel. Because if God sends you through trials and tribulation, guess what? He'll bring you through them too. And, and so Job says, Job says, Satan is on his job, trying to destroy men and women, boys and girls who serve the Lord, as well as those who don't know the Lord. He will tell you lies. And, and I was taught at an early age, Sister Ellis, that if, uh, if, if the truth is half of a lie, then it, it equates to a lie totally. And so we need to understand that Satan knows how to twist 
the words of God, just like Adam and Eve in the garden. Um, uh, surely, if you eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you won't die. No, 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 no. Surely, you, you can go ahead and eat it. And then they fell for the okie doke. You have to understand that everybody that comes into your life is not for you or with Christ. And so we need to understand that we've got to be on our P's and Q's when folk come and offer us different things. Uh, you have to understand uh, that uh, Satan is not an advocate, he's an adversary. And the thing about it is that he is not with you. He is a, a person who goes against God in every step of the way. This is the same Satan that's got into Judas Iscariot and told him that it was okay to sell Je Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Been with Jesus, ate with Jesus, slept with Jesus, talked with Jesus, but then for 30 pieces of silver, Satan put it in his head that it was all right. Then he realized the mistake, but it was too late. And so we need to understand that Satan is on his job. Just look at Satan. He, he, that's like me going up to one of uh, the uh, offices in, in Houston, corporate offices, and just sit there. And they ask me, say, man, what are you doing here? Well, I just came by to see what y'all were doing. <laughs> you would be put out. But guess what? God didn't put Satan out. God says, have you considered my servant, Job? And so God will use us. Here it is. Here it is. God will use us as a test subject in order to disprove the lies of Satan. I maybe I need to say that again. What you're going through in life may not be for your benefit. It might be for somebody else's benefit, since it says. Our hurtings, our different things and trials and tribulations, our lost loved ones that we've gone through might not be the benefit of us. But it could be benefit somebody else that either going through or will be going through. How can you handle Satan? You got to let the Lord do it. And so we have to understand God has a different way of handling Satan than we do. We can't master Satan. Satan is not going to be bound up until Jesus Christ come back. That's, that's, that's Bible. But he does give us the word to fight off Satan. Uh, 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 when Satan came at Jesus being in the wilderness of 40 days and 40 nights, uh, he used the written word. Turn these, uh, Satan says, turn these uh, uh, stones to bread. He says, man cannot live by bread alone. He used the written word. If Jesus used the written word, what do you think about us? That's another thing. We need to know the written word. We need to study the written word. A lot of times we don't want to read anything. And sometimes we get okie doped because we don't want to read. We, we don't want to read. We don't want to. You have to read because Satan will make it look so good. If he can turn himself into what seemed to be a shining light and fool some of the very elect, what do you think about us? We've got to know what God has to say about Satan. He's no good. He, that's why they call him the devil. He's devilish. And the thing about it is that we have to understand that every, let, let me say this a little bit quieter because I don't want to alarm anybody, but when you get up in the morning, Satan is right there. Amen. And you know how he gets into the church? He rides with us. Amen. If you've got a bad attitude, if you've got a bad disposition, guess what? Satan is right there. This is the person I want to use this morning. Don't let Satan use you. Amen. And so here it is, is that Job, look at this, sometimes God keeps us out of the actual test until he read it to reveal to us what it was all about. Look at your text. The thing about it is that here it is, Satan is on his job, and Job knew nothing about Satan's challenge to God and had no idea that the enemy was using him as a reason for slandering God. That's what Satan did. He keeps you out of it. The thing about it is that I don't want to tell you what's going on until you're in the heat of the battle. Let me tell you something about Satan. Satan is kind of like a drunk can stupor. For most of us who have been out in the world and um, 
you know, we had that high on the way home, right. hubcap down the road. We don't know where we were. We don't know how we got home. We just, I, I guess I'm the only one. <laughs> but the thing is, is that uh, you, you know how that high leaves you? If anything happens, you get in a wreck or you hit something, remember how that high leaves you? Uh, says, the police are on the way. I'm, I'm leaving you. You get sober real quick. I'm, I'm talking to somebody who has been inebriated along the way. Inebriated means just a fancy word for being drunk. That's all it is. And so the thing is that uh, the high leaves you, and when the police come or you get a ticket for driving under the influence, the high leaves you. And that's what Satan does. Satan, when he sees you in trouble, then he slithers away. And so we have to understand, don't fool with him. Because Satan will take you to places that you don't want to go. Satan will make you stay longer than you want to stay. And Satan will end up making you pay the bill more than you can afford. And so what we need to do is stay out of his way. Let God master him. Now, it's, it's kind of a... Uh, a conflictual situation to where Job does not know what's going on in his life. But as long as God is in control, that's the only thing that matters. And sometimes we need to take our hands off the wheel when God is in control. Every time is not the time to question God about what's going on in our life. But it is a time for prayer. There is a time for asking God to fix it, Jesus, if you will, and here, by and by, farther on up the road, we can see where you were. Maybe I'm the only one that have been traveling, and God has allowed Satan to get in my life, and yet still, on the other side of the storm, he let me see exactly why I was going through. And so we need to be patient on God. Job was patient on God. Let me go back and pick up some other things. That Job is a praying man, not only for himself, but he prayed and had sacrifices for his children. That's a praying man. And some of us right here, we pray for our children, even if they don't do right. We still love them and we still pray for them. God is just like that, to where he protects us and prays for us and forgives us for our sins. And so we need to give God all the glory. But here Satan is using Job uh, to try to get frustrated and curse God. Job said ain't having none of that. Job went through a lot of things, all of the sores. They said these sores, uh, were, 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 there were pusses running out of them. They itched, and he's sitting in sackcloth and ashes. As you read on, this was a terrible time for Job. But in the end, he hung in there. I, I'm going to wait until my change comes. And that's the attitude as Christians that we must hold on every day that I'm going to wait on the Lord until my change comes because if God gets us in it, he's able to get us out of it. And so we need to understand that Job had the faith. Now here, this is where the faith testing comes. Job could have even thrown in the town. Uh, when all of his friends came around to talk to Job, Job, you have to do something. A lot of folk think because you're having bad things happen in your life that, that you've done something wrong. It, it's in the text. You don't have to do anything wrong. Satan just might be trying to use you to get you to curse and give up on God. But, but, but be like Job. Just hang in there. That testing of faith that those days back in the old where we were tested in our faith, help us now to deal with what's going on. Because if you don't have faith in God, then what's going on in Washington, D.C., you can't deal with it. But knowing that God is 101% in control, it makes us sleep well at night. And so we need to understand that Satan uh, is, is busy. Look, the other day they were saying that uh, one of the Pentecostal ministers, hear me well, uh, said that God put uh, uh, Trump here to, in, uh, uh, to, to, to do this stuff at the border, to treat folk and put them in cages. Are you listening to me? This is a Pentecostal preacher. Trump has a black heart. 
That's what it's all about. Yeah, the thing about it is that when you have a black heart, you'll do anything. You don't know anything about God. The thing about it is that, but God is still in control. And so we need to understand, rather than worrying about what someone else is doing, we need to keep our eyes focused on the Lord. He says, he says, neither did Job know that God was using his suffering to defeat, defeat Satan. See, when you've gone through, and I'm almost through with this, when you've gone through trials and tribulation, when you've gone through hurt, pain, and a heartache, and you come through it, you can tell somebody that Jesus is a friend of mine. He has brought me through many things, many times, many trials and tribulations, but guess what? I haven't given up on him. And he surely has not given up on me. So we need to understand that sometimes uh, uh, where God will use our faith and our suffering, you just had it the other day, Sister Carl. You just had those who were infected by cancer who gave up and gave a testimony about how good God is. That he's still keeping them. And that, that gives hope to somebody on the other side of the mountain who's going to be coming through the rough side of the mountain, knowing, number one, there's support for you. If you're going through, you need to call up some Christians who can really pray for you. You need to call up somebody that knows something about Jesus Christ. It says that we ought to fellowship with one another, but we ought to tell our troubles to one another. Now, I'll put a pen here, Sister Conley. We need to tell some folk who's mature enough to handle our stuff and not go back and regurgitate it to everybody down the road. Because everybody can't keep a secret. I told you the story about the man uh, who was, there was three men in a boat and they was fishing and, and they got to fishing and fishing wasn't really biting that good, but uh, uh, they began to say, hey man, you know, I've been thinking about something. What, 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 what gets you? What, what's your bite? One guy says, well, I, you know, I... I, 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 every now and then I find myself, my eyes straying, and I, I watch different women. Go by. Not, not that I touch them, but I, I watch women. He says, are you old church goer, you? And you do stuff like that? He said, well, what's yours? He said, well, you know, every now and then I like to gamble a little bit. I like to go down the cachata and do a little gambling, push a little buttons. And, you know, I used to pull the arm bandit, but now they got the buttons you push. Some of y'all know about that. But anyway, um, the third person says, well, you, you, you know, uh, I like to take a little nip every now and then. I, 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 I like to take a little a nip uh, every now and then. He said, but I'm sure glad to know uh, uh, y'all, uh, what y'all are doing. He said, because my other vice is I can't hold secrets. <laughs> and I can't wait to get back to let everybody else know what your vice is. You got to be careful how you pray and tell folk about what you're going through. Make sure it's a Christian who knows, and God is a God who will not reveal your situation. We need to understand that through his suffering, he defeated Satan. Because Satan says, if you take everything he had, that's the camel, that's the sheep, all that he has, his sons and his daughters, guess what? That's got to be devastating. And guess what? He held right there. No matter how you, what I'm going through, Lord, I'm going to stay right there. That's faith. That's testing of faith. Job said, the wife says to him, you know what? You're going through all this suffering. You ought to just curse God and God. He says, you speak as a foolish woman. He's brought me too far. He's brought me too many circumstances and situations. He's brought me through many storms of life. I can't give up on him now. I, I'm not going to quit and throw in the towel now because he's proved it over and over and over that he will bring us through if we hang in there. Job says, I'm not going to curse God. I'm just going to wait till my change comes. If you Listen to this. This is another point out of this lesson. If you only obey God because he blesses you, the shadowness of your faith will show up at testing time. If you don't really trust God, if you don't, Know how to trust God. See, trusting God is when you have pains and aches over your body and you still lay down late at night and don't worry about waking up in the morning, Sister Davis, but your anchor, your soul is anchored 
in the power of an almighty God, you can get some good night's sleep. Because you know that God has got you in the palm of his hand. A faith, again, that cannot be tested. It's not a faith that cannot be trusted. When Satan tests your faith, Jesus Christ is the greatest advocate you could ever have defend you. He, he defends us pro bono. He, he defends us because he's already paid the price. Isn't it good to have somebody who you know can bring you out on the other side, no matter what Satan throws at you. No, no matter what he brings us into, God is able to defend us because in my law, little law of mine, that you can't try a person twice for the same crime. And so Jesus has already paid the price for us. Isn't it wonderful to serve a God who is not only our advocate, but guess what? He defends us and feeds us. He leads and guides us. We should know that God is all right. He's an all right God, and he's there so still is to take us wherever he wants us to go. Now, like any highway, there are going to be some bumps in the road. When we were in Waco, they have a bad road system. We thought Houston had a bad road system. Waco needs some work, but we still maneuvered and got around Waco and got to where we needed to be. In, in life, there are going to be some road detours. There are going to be some bumpy roads, but, but Sister Nella, if we hang in there, if we keep holding on to God's unchanging hand, guess what he'll bring you through? Heard a little story as I close here today. I, I like this. It said that uh, death came in the room with an old man. He says, it's your time. The old man looked at him. And he looked kind of puzzled. He says, it's your time. The old man looked at him and says, have you ever made a mistake? He said, no, it's your time. He said, but why don't the old man says, I want to know if you ever made a mistake. He said, no, I never made a mistake. He, he says, it's your time. Old man asked him again, said, have you ever, have you ever made a mistake? Then Satan got to thinking, death got to thinking. And he thought about it. He says, you know, I don't a hill called Calvary. I, I, I'm, I'm used to killing important folk and, and less important folk and potentates and different folk. I kill everybody. He said, that man that was on the left, I killed him and nothing happened. He said, he died real quick. The man on the right, he says, I killed. It took him a little long to die. But guess nothing happened. But that third man that was hanging in the middle of the cross, he says, I killed him, but it didn't work. Early that Sunday morning, they put him in a bar or tomb, but he got up with all power. He said, I made a mistake that time. Because he still lives. Jesus still lives. So I want you to know that Jesus is real. He's real in my soul. You ask me how I know he is. I can feel him every now and then moving on the altar of my heart. God is an awesome God. A God who never makes a mistake. So if you're coming around the rough side of the mountain, Guess what God can see you through? Some of us got some witnesses of Lord Wilson that we've been up and down the rough side of the mountain. But Jesus has been right there with us. One is named goodness, and the other one is named in mercy. We need to understand that God is an awesome God. How many of us know God is all right? Oh, yeah. How many know that he will test us from time to time? We need to understand that the testing of our faith makes us grow stronger. It's like Popeye and his spinach. If you eat the spinach, Popeye say you can overcome some things. The spinach of Jesus Christ is his written word. If we digest it, it will make us come out all right on the other side. 
There might be someone who don't know that Jesus is the almighty God, who don't know that you can come to him and he can save you through eternal life. Jesus, Jesus is all right. I'm so glad that I could call Jesus a friend of mine, for he truly is. What, how to handle opposition, whether it be from Satan or whether it be from someone who's sent by Satan, guess what? If you hang in there, God says, as I go to my seat, the battle is not yours. It belongs to the Lord. Thank you.